Welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 of Cashin' the Check. I'm your host, Tyler Asher from the Small Business Development Center. I'm your co-host, Tiffany Anton from the Biz Foundry. Make sure you subscribe and like and share and all the things for Cashin' the Check. You could be known as like my partner in crime or... Yeah. Do we need to come up with a better name than co-host? Um. Yeah, some business terms. So... Let us know what we should call ourselves in business. Co-owner. Co-owner. I don't know. Okay. Listen, we'll come up with like a new title. Owner. And we maybe we'll do a different one every time. Sounds great. I like it. I like look, This is like an ever-changing flow style podcast. Like we just make stuff up on the fly. We honestly don't know what we're doing. We have meticulously planned for hours and hours and hours and really thought through and everything. And then we change it like that. I scratch Everybody. it. I'm like, oh, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> It goes back to our first episode. We talked about forgiveness versus permission. For sure. So let's just jump in and get our ducks right in a row. Ducks in a row. So this is our, our listeners <laughs> have decided. That's our duck they in a row. They make quack. They don't oh. make that. <laughs> quack, quack. Okay. Ducks in a row. So this is the fun, exciting part of. Business fun facts. Business fun facts. So this one's kind of fun. Number one. Colgate's first toothpaste came in What? A jar. How'd you know? What? Are you like literally? F- You're like, this is ridiculous. I'm feeling on fire today. Warren Buffett started out as a blank repairman. VCR. Incorrect. You probably won't even think about it. Microwave repairman. Incorrect. A pinball repairman. A pinball machine. Interesting. How crazy is that? Craziness. Yahoo was originally called Yahoo. Yahoo. Yahoo! Was originally called what? Not rub my back. <laughs> no, that was, that was what Google was Google. called. It was called Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web. Do you remember um, Ask Jeeves? That's when I... Oh, oh yeah. I'm a little like bit ask, older than no, you. No, I, I, I... Listen. It was called... I remember Ask. It was called Ask Jeeves originally. Ask Jeeves. So for those of us that are a little bit older than Tyler, um, it was Ask Jeeves and it was like a little old guy, like cartoon mm-hmm. thing and AJ, Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. That's a good one. A man who had half his body amputated after being run over by a truck opened his own bargain supermarket called what? Half man. Half man, half price store. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, was, I was half right on that answer. <laughs> so this one's kind of funny because we've had a toilet paper <laughs> shortage. So when Scott Paper Company first started manufacturing toilet paper, they did not put their name on the product because of embarrassment. No, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know that if I was Scott, I don't know that I would want to have toilet paper named after me. Is it, you think it's a first name or a last name? A number one name or a number two name? (laughs) (laughs) Oh Lord, her mind has gone to the gutter already. Oh goodness. Walmart has revenues that exceed those of the five following stores. What stores would those be combined? Walmart's revenue exceeds five big, I mean, tons. Target? Yeah. Home Depot? Yeah. Lowe's. Actually, Lowe's is on there. Mm. Sears? Of course, Sears is gone now. <laughs> Does anybody? I think Kmart. that's everybody. And everybody. Aren't, 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 Safeway. Okay. Target's the only maybe surprising. Home but. Depot? That's, I mean, right now, I mean, think about that. Okay. This is really neat. Of course, when you... You get to work in government. This thing is brought up a lot. I like how you say you get to work in government. Most people are I'm like, blessed Bleh. to work in government. Walt Disney World generates about 120,000 120, pounds of this every day. Cotton candy. No. <laughs> it's probably something you're not going to think about. Walt Disney, Walt 120 Disney. pounds. 120,000 pounds of this every day. Garbage. Garbage. Think about that. That's a, that's yeah. a lot of garbage. That's, that's a lot of garbage. The creator of the Nike swoosh symbol was paid only this amount of money for the design. Take a guess. Does that, do we know what year? Uh, it doesn't say what year. $125. No, it's actually less than that. $72. No, it's less than that. $35. <gasps> what? But see, that could have been but like... that could have been like in the... 1904. Mm, I don't know. That's a good one to look into. Somebody comment below and tell us what year Nike started and when the swoosh was developed. 
January 25th, 1964. Oh, I was, I mean, $35 in 1904, which was my guess was probably like $500 now. That's probably about right. Which I guess that would have made sense because like to develop a logo is probably about $500 now. Is there really that much to develop a logo? I don't know. It depends on who you're. If you're listening, give us the price below. Right. <laughs> it depends on who you're asking. Well, let's All just right. jump right into the big picture. Big picture. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Customer service. Customer service. Uh, yeah. So can we, you want to go down the hall of customer service versus customer experience? Or are we just going to stay on the topic today of customer service and what it means in a small business? Customer service and what it means in a small business. What it means in a small business. So you give me your definition of customer service in a small business. Customer service in a small business is making sure you take care of your customers and develop the relationships necessary um, and realize that not just serving that customer in a small business means something, but that customer is going to I, every the whole context of what I think about is Upper Cumberland. So in the Upper Cumberland, we're so relationally intertwined, Correct. collaborative. Um, and so I think that, you know, you're my customer knowing you're going to go tell your mama and your mom's mama is going to tell somebody else. And everybody's going to talk about it at church around the mashed potatoes, at, you know, Saturdays. And you're talking about my southern <laughs> accent. Supper or something like that. Um, I think yeah. customer service is maybe going above and beyond for the customer when you're working with them, mm -hmm. doing something that's a little extra to make that customer want to come back to you versus going to your competitor. How, how often in small businesses that you go to, do you feel like you're almost like, are we, are we friends? Am I friends with that person? Cause I feel like, yeah, I'm a like, I, I mean the auto players that I had in my car, they, they were working on my car and I'm like, I kind of think we might be friends. <laughs> like I get that. I get that a lot. Maybe now more than ever because of what we do. When I go places, I'm always like, "Hey, do you know we can help with that?" I know. And they're like, "Are you serious?" Yeah. And and so the conversation. I do that. I, I kind of like customer service from I, our perspective. Yeah. What we do is we're always trying to help people. This, I, met, I met with someone yesterday, on a personal note, but before we left, they were like. So what is it you do? How do I get, how do I get involved with all this? Yeah, it's for me, personal service from the biz foundry perspective, it's like in my bones, it's in my blood. Like I can't, nobody can, people cannot talk about business around me without me saying like, Hey, do you know what we do? Do you know what we are? How, how can I help you? I do it on dates sometimes, <laughs> which is probably why I'm single. Anyway, um, I think that I just think it's... I've lost my train of thought. I'm done. <laughs> on that. I'm out. What about, though, with customer service? How do you deal with the unpleasant, unhappy, no matter what you do? Maybe it's my faith. Maybe it's just who I am. I always try to treat people the way I want to be treated regardless of their... Because we don't know what been affected that person prior to coming to that point of like friction. So they may have a, they may have they may have got terrible news. They come into you. They need to. They're just trying to take. I mean, I don't think I, it happens intentionally. Do you? Sometimes. Okay. We've been through situations where maybe things weren't communicated well enough beforehand or whatever, and um, a lot of what we do is really kind of we can work with people on, on things that we need to work on. And so, um, I really apologize. Said, don't worry. There's scholarships available. We'll take care of it. And and it. Really was no matter what we did, she was unhappy. Well, I think you're going to have customers regardless. You're never going to make them happy. Right, right. And I think there are people like that. And for me personally, I take that t tough. Like I take it to heart that it's like, well, I I want to, you know, the biz foundry itself, I never want to have a black mark on it. Well, I think too, you have to realize, and maybe this is for, for our listeners, there are certain times in business, like you just got to make certain decisions and they're just a business decision. It's mm -hmm. nothing personally. It's nothing against you. But there's sometimes you just got to make a hard decision. And and I think that that can equivalent to customer service. Like sometimes you just need to say, look, we can't do this. We've done everything we can do to make you happy. Obviously, you're never going to be happy. Can customer service make or break a business? Oh, for sure. For sure. You so, want to do some like you want to do some call outs? You want to call some people out? Yeah. Okay, give me one. Okay, so CG's Boutique okay. is, there's a lot of women's boutiques around town, and she is 
develops such a good relationship and such uh, has such great customer service. I mean, there's times where people are like, oh, there's somebody else working in there. I don't want to go in there right now. But she has such a great um, just attitude and... And I think she does a really great job. What do you think about like when I think of like I like I think the bank, certain banks. What shout out to shout out to my folks over at F and M Bank. Shout out to my folks over at First Volunteer. Kelly Sullivan. So, but like we, I can call <laughs> Kelly and say, "Hey, I got this." Or when I had a business, I'm like, "Hey, I need this." Pro- Kelly probably doesn't want us to say that you can. We can just call her up. But I mean, there are times where I text her and I'm like, "Hey, I don't know how to log into the <laughs> online system," and she's like. <laughs> I do that with Suzanne a lot. And I think that, but that relationship to me, that customer service, when I pull in and... And there's a million banks in this town that you could choose. There's tons. 17 local banks or something. They know who I am. They ask about my kids. How are things going? That's important to me. You feel like they're your friends. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I appreciate that. If I buy a car, I go to one specific person because... I don't have to worry about it. Like they, they're yeah. honest, they're upfront, <laughs> they take care of it. The that, place where a, I go to get my oil changed, I, I, I kind of go back to that same place because they kind of they'll laugh with me, they'll joke around. You know, it's a, a good kind of atmosphere there. And who wants to get their oil changed anyway? Like that's not fun. But but you have to get it done. Right. It's got something you got to do. So um, the same thing. Like I'll go to I'll go back to the insurance world because that's what I've been in the last ten years. I'm with a certain agency because I'm, I can text them. I can make a phone call. They do it. There's no, it's all about customer service to me. Do you think customer service, if you have a, an exceptional level of customer service, can that help you grow your business at a faster rate? I think so. I mean, definitely people will be like, man, I'm surprised at what service I got there or they do this or, you know, they're going above and beyond. And, you know, you, you were talking about kind of when you had the insurance of just checking over people's policy, that's not anything you had to do. And then people are like, oh yeah, go to Tyler. He knows what he's doing and can help you grow it in a different way because it stands out. And me as a consumer, if it, if some, if their service really stands out, I try and go out of my way to help refer them to tag them in social media to go and leave a <clears throat> Google, a rub my back review. <laughs> so Google oh my, my business, <laughs> rub, my, rub my back. Gonna rub my back review. That's a new one. Google, we're going to get like a cease and desist from so Google. Cause we're doing, talking about so inappropriate. That's so funny. So we're just going to dive right into drinking the Kool-Aid. What are we drinking today? The Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Uh, so do you think, Talking about setting prices, yeah. do you think... That's scary. That, that, it can be scary, right? It can be scary, but do you think that customer service can tie into your, to your prices? Like, we kind of marry Ooh. the two together. Because to me, like, if you have a really good customer service, you follow through on a lot of things, can you increase your price a little more? Because you're... Because it kind of... I hate to say this, but kinda like it kind of goes into like that whole customer experience thing that we've yeah. talked about. Yeah. But if you have really good customer service, can that dictate some of your prices. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that it can, I think that you're going to, I mean, look at like service industries, hair salons or, um, I don't know what are service industries that men use. Well, I mean, you got the barbershop barbershops or whatever. And you know, if you have a good barber, apparently there's a, there's a barber around here that will give an, a shoulder masha- massage after, um, it cuts your hair. <laughs> but, but I mean, that, that's, I feel like sometimes in businesses when they set prices, they're so into the business that they don't step out of the business to see it from a customer standpoint. Would you yeah. agree, disagree? Um, I think that that goes a little bit into st- setting prices goes back into a previous episode about giving things away for free and having that. Okay. Well, where's the value? What do you, you know, if you set prices lower, maybe you'll get more people in, but maybe it's not the right people that you want. Correct. If you set prices higher, r- what is really the mission of what you're doing in the business and who you're trying to serve? Um, I think those are really thing, important things, but I think some people can can get really desperate and they set prices real low because they just want, I want so desperately for people to buy whatever I have out there. And sometimes, especially with makers, they can not, not even be making oh, minimum wage. Yes, I agree. And I see that. And a you lot. have a side hustle where you're a maker. Yeah. And I mean, how do you feel confident in, okay, I know I'm not going to be making minimum wage on what I'm doing. For me, I value my time and then I also value in 
that time that it takes away from my kids and my wife. I think the thing that entrepreneurs and business owners miss, they have to value their time. If they're, if you're making something or you have a service to justify that, because I, I, I saw this in business cases too, where people have a lot of customers because they have a lower price point, but then they also have a lot more headaches. They don't make as much money. And when you start diving into things, if you increase your price, they're like, well, I'm going to lose customer bases. And I said, that's fine because if you lose customer base here, but you're still making the same amount of money, that's a, a win-win. There's a sweet spot. And you I know, think a lot of people, it takes them a while to figure that out. Yeah, it is a balance of just, you know, trying to do different things of like, okay, well, if I increase this price or I increase this you know, add services into something I'm doing or whatever. Like there's a balance of trying to figure it all out. And it takes a couple of years for people to kind of iron out those details. I agree. If you were, if you're a business owner, listen to this and I can give you one, one piece of advice and, and chime in here. I think it's valuable to have someone that is out of your industry. Take a look at what you're doing. Would you agree? Yeah. Because to me, you're giving someone, that doesn't do it every day. They're not, you know, like Mr. Farley's big on us about acronyms and cause I'm in it every day. Like I oh, yeah. can use a lot of acronyms. You don't like to use acronyms cause. And yeah. it's comfortable cause I understand what they mean, but to someone who has no idea. TSBDC took me a very long, I would, I kind of almost would have to stop and think it through each time because, um, I mean, I knew what you, it was a small business development center, but it's like, well, wait, what are those letters again? And it just didn't roll off the tongue. And, and that's why I would encourage people to step, have someone who's not in their grind. I'm going to, I'm up. going to throw a wrench in this though and say, be careful on who you give permission to That's probably a good point. have some sort of opinion on your business yeah. because everybody that has a brain thinks that they have, they could be a consumer. We all got opinions. They're just like armpits. They all stink. <laughs> I mean, that's, just, I mean, that's, that's, that's true. Cause I hope you already owned it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that that is a very true statement. You got to find someone who's in that realm and maybe I should. Yeah. Re, re, so I, yeah, I think you need to find someone who's in your, somebody that has no business sense and, or, or they are a business owner. Maybe take a look at what, how their business is doing. It's kind of like you're in the, the words of Jeff Brown, your, your football coach should play a little football. How does customer service affect you setting prices? I think the better your customer service, the higher you can set your prices. So are you willing to pay pay more to have better customer service? <sighs> I'm, I feel like I'm kind of a frugally person. So, so let, let me ask you this. I'm not, there's no sponsorship. There's none of that. Chick-fil-A. I feel like. Somebody's really hungry. Ben I Prime. Hungry. I feel like you pay a little more for their stuff, but they have great customer service. Like there's certain things I, I'm willing to pay more for because they have great customer service. Yes, so certain things, but I wouldn't say across the board because um, you still got to get people in. You still got to, if you have great customer service, but your prices are listed on your website and they're like, eh, ah, you know, I can go over, I'm just looking for a place to go get my oil change. Uh, you know, I could go here and it's $30 cheaper than here. It's like, well, maybe I'll go to the $30 cheaper. Like for me, when I go to wash my car, I go to one particular place because I, I like the people that are there. That to me, their stuff is more accessible. Now, it's for me, it's on the opposite side of town, but I go there, and it's actually I think it's actually a couple more, a couple dollars more because it's to me I like where it's at, how it's done. Stuff yeah. is accessible. It's always clean. I know we're supposed to be talking about small businesses, but my I have a robot vacuum. It's called a Bob Sweep. It's not a Roomba, which is kind mm -hmm. of the normal, but these I've had it for maybe five or six years. Every time I, I, this is where we go back to like feeling like your friends, my service guy, I had to find um, like a brush or something. They, they found my old order from five or six years ago. They're like, it's not under warranty. We'll get, I, and now I've ordered other parts and I just email this guy directly. And I feel like we're, I actually tried to look him up on LinkedIn <laughs> because I was like, he's so good at what he does. He makes me feel so important and he takes care of the things I need to get taken care of. I've shouted out Bob sweep everywhere. I possibly could. I probably have done 10 Google 
reviews for them because I, I just, never heard of Bob Sweep. I, listen, you're not following my Facebook. I'm I'm going to do more of it. But I think that goes back to a great customer service. When you have good customer service, it makes people want to loyalty. They buy into they the like loyalty. loyalty. And that was the thing too. Like when my parents had the gas stations, they wanted great customer service. Because if those people don't come back and they don't spend money, then we don't. It goes back to that same cycle of you don't you don't have customers, you don't have money, you don't have a business, you don't have a house. Yeah. So we're gonna jump right into at the end of the day. This is our becoming our at the end of the day business statistics. Business statistics. I, we're, right. we're switching it up today, and so I I'm get gonna to guess. Okay, I'm a little nervous. How often do businesses fail in the first two years, and then? Five years and then 10 years. So two years, I would say probably, are we doing like percentages? Uh, it's a fraction. Oh, it's a fraction. <laughs> oh, I would say easily. Which I could make it, uh, I'm smart enough to make it a percentage, but we could do fractions. Three quarters. Two thirds. Two th- oh, that was going to be my second so guess. It's close-ish. And then within the f- f- five years. One quarter. Half of businesses fail within the first five years. <sighs> you think as the director, I would know these things. And, and how many survive 10 years? A third. A third. So, Man, my fractions are off today. Yeah, it's yeah. What's the most frequent reason for business failure? I feel like you should know this one for sure. Not enough money. Yep, eighty-two percent of businesses that cited failed cited cash flow. And I have one more for you, and this is an older article, but still, I think this. Relevant. Um, yeah, I think I'm really excited to see if you have uh, an idea about this. So this is from 2015. So a little bit older. The average SBA loan was how big? In 2015. Average. Average. 1.725 million. Lower. Really? 900,000. Even lower. These were micro loans, apparently. (laughs) 371,628 average. So three hundred and seventy thousand. That's good to know. Average loan. So that's about a right price for an SBA loan. I mean, it's got to be. You should have known that, and um, you're yeah. disappointed that I did not know. The I'm a little disappointed. Let's hope that Mark Farley is not listening to this episode. That maybe he won't <laughs> know. Maybe a new director at SBDC <laughs> after this. Episode. We might have a new uh, co-owner for <laughs> for cashing the check after that. Uh, wherever you're at, make sure you like, subscribe, hit, hit the, the bell, bell notification to stay tuned to our podcast. We've got some great episodes coming up. We're going to get some special guests in here. So we're excited for this. Shout out to Mark Farley over at the Development District. Shout out to Jeff Brown at the Biz Foundry that letting us come over here and be crazy and do our thing. <laughs> so appreciate it. Stay tuned. Have a great day. See ya.